So this right here is a Pine phone by Pine64. It is a Linux smartphone that goes well beyond being a smartphone and we're gonna kinda test that in this video today. So over the last week or so, I've been distro hopping between a lot of the Linux mobile distributions out there and I'm having a really, really good time playing with this thing. But in this video, we're gonna be testing loading a couple different server services on it to see what it can handle. And some of the services we're gonna be testing include, well, the only services we're gonna be testing are Nextcloud. We're gonna see if we can load up a Nextcloud instance and actually uh, get into the web UI and all that stuff. We're gonna be running a Jellyfin media server and seeing if we can stream a 4K movie from this phone to another device. And then we're gonna load up a Minecraft server and see one, if it'll actually work and two, if we can log in. So without wasting too much time, let's go ahead and load Peer Arch onto this phone, get some of the dependencies and get going. So one of the really good things about coughing up the extra $50 to get the model up for the Pine phone is this guy right here. This is the little docking hub that comes with it with a USB type C powered by USB type C. And what this is gonna do is allow us an ethernet connection. Now that's important because being the fact that we're gonna be running R2, be able to connect to the internet, pull packages, updates, and things like that. So with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and get this plugged in. You can see here, I just flashed a fresh version of Arch to this on the phone. And what it's going to do is boot up and it's going to be a very fresh Arch install. And because we're using the stock, I actually hooked it up to a capture card. So we're gonna be able to go ahead and actually see what's going on on the screen here at least for our initial setup and what we're gonna to do. To so now we are booted into this Arch system. So as specified in the wiki for this specific uh, image, the password is alarm and the, well, the username is alarm and the password is one, two, three, four, five, six. So now you can see we are in the system and the first thing we're gonna do is just run an update and grab a couple packages. So to do this, we're gonna sudo pacman uh, syu and at the end of that, we're gonna grab a couple things, including the base devil, which these packages are required for a lot of what we're gonna be doing. And in addition, we're gonna grab NeoFetch and uh, HTOP is not included on this as well. So we're gonna go ahead and update the system and grab those three packages. So now type in our password, hit enter, and it's gonna go ahead and start pulling everything. So what I'm gonna do real quick is clear out this screen so you could go ahead and see what is going on. If I close this out and let's go NeoFetch just like so I kind of briefly overview the specifications of this phone. You see we are running Arch64, the ARM version, on a Pine phone by Pine64, running the 5.10 kernel with Bash. After the uh, NeoFetch HTOP install and the update, we have 190 packages. And you can see that it is resting right about 100 megabytes of RAM, which is pretty good. And we have a four core CPU with 1.15 gigahertz per core. And with that said, we could go ahead and run HTOP and get a better look of what is going on on this phone. You can see here, 105 megabytes of RAM, so that was fairly accurate, and the CPU is under no stress at all. We have a very light amount of tasks open with 17 in total. So, with that said, what we're gonna do now is go ahead and SSH into this device uh, so I can actually uh, manage these cables a little bit better. And let's see what this phone can handle. So the very first thing that I'm gonna do on this Pine phone is install Nextcloud. Nextcloud is something that is very light. It should be able to run this no problem. I just wanna make sure that one, it can, and two, the experience is fluid. Because even if our next tests don't work, this would be a perfect use case for this phone if you don't plan on using it as a phone. So actually SSHing into one of these servers is fairly easy. All we're gonna need to do is type SSH, the username at the local IP address. When you do that, it's gonna ask if it's authentic, simply putting yes, and then we're gonna put in that password. And now we are connected to the server as if we are typing, or the phone as if we are typing directly on it. So now what I did is I went ahead and simply did the same thing on the bottom terminal, opened up HTOP. So now moving forward, we're actually able to monitor what is going on on the phone from our computer. So I went ahead and just did a number of things. I installed Git, I installed Yay, I installed Snapped, and then I went ahead and installed the Nextcloud Snap package. Now you can see right here a summary of it. Summary, it says it is done today, just now. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and see if this loads up perfectly fine. 
So I'm going to bring in my web browser right here and we're just going to go to the local IP address and this one is 23 and in theory this should work. There we go, we have our Nextcloud instance. We do see some uh, activity coming from the uh, CPU here. Instead of writing at around 3% average like it was before, we can see everything's around 10% or so. So initially we do see that we are, it's not at 100%, which is really, really good because this is probably the most, uh, one of the more strenuous processes that Nextcloud is going to actually have to do, which is the setup process. Uh, from idle, well from idle with Nextcloud service running, it jumped about 60, uh, about 100 megabytes of RAM, and you can see we're writing about all three cores, somewhere between 30 and 60% CPU usage. And I would like to note real quick that while it was actually uh, making the packages for both EA and Snapped, uh, the CPU was writing at 100% the entire time. So uh, doing something like that was definitely a strenuous process on this. The RAM didn't jump up too bad, but the CPU definitely had to put in some work to build these packages to get Nextcloud running. Alright, so we're getting some movement here. You just saw there that it did kind of spike pretty close to 100 on all the cores. Um, it's going back and forth, so, so far I'd say it's not doing too bad at all. Alright, so Nextcloud just finished up installing and we have this uh, the Nextcloud hub little slide through thing. So we're going to start using Nextcloud. We can see that it is using a little bit more RAM, but now that it's not actively installing anything, the CPU is not having to work too hard at all. So the main thing I want to check with this is, especially if you're hosting a Nextcloud instance externally on like a VPN or a VPS server, um, you can really tell if the server is just not good. And you could tell that by moving directories and going in between applications and just being slow. So we're just going to jump around here and see how this actually performs. So we see files opening up. It's not taking too long. I've definitely been on VPSs that are uh, have much slower response than this. So let's go ahead and open up one of these pictures here. It's opening up the pictures fine. We can shuffle through. There's a little bit of load. This is all hardwired internet, so that's really not the bottleneck here. The bottleneck is the uh, system specs of the Pine Phone. Yeah, so far it's looking so good. So now that we know that it can handle going through the file system, opening up photos, basic stuff pretty well, what we're gonna do is install a quick little text editing application just to make sure that the uh, responsiveness is there. We do see a little bit of spike here when it's going to install this. So let's open up the note application. Pretty quick to load up. Let's add a new note and see how, uh, make sure it's fairly responsive. Which it is, we go. Let's jump over to files real quick and see if that note has saved with that kind of quick switch maneuver that we did. And it's there. So, a conclusion for our first test is can a Pine phone host a Nextcloud instance? And I would have to say yes. And now let's get into something I'm actually not too sure about. Let's see if the Pine phone can work as a media server and stream content throughout my home network. All right, I finally got the Jellyfin server set up that we could actually test streaming media. It took me quite a while to actually build all this. It took forever to install it. And I had to figure out some things with permissions here and I think I got it working completely fine. And I have an interesting selection of media before you judge. The reason I have Trolls on here is because it's the only 4K movie that I have. And I picked uh, Tom McDonald or MacDonald music video because it's the only one I could stream and not probably get a copyright strike. So first we're just gonna see, we're gonna play this Tom McDonald video and see how it messes with the system. So before anything you can see with just running the Jellyfin service, it's running in between zero and 4%. There's an initial spike there, but when it starts playing, it seems to be doing fairly okay. You can see if I skip around here, the actual, uh, it spikes up to about 20% but nothing that it can't really handle. All right, so the laptop just now loaded up the Trolls movie and you can see that one of the CPU cores is maxed out at 100%, but nothing else is really doing anything. The actual playback is really, really smooth. Uh, the RAM shot up a little bit, but for streaming a 4K movie off of the phone, it is doing a um, phenomenal job. So while it does this with that one core at 100%, oh, it's shifting up a bit. I'm not exactly sure why the one core, and it's not evenly distributing the load, but it's streaming pretty good. 
Uh, we're going to play this video again just to see how it reacts with two things streaming at the exact same time and it's really not doing too bad at all. I'm actually surprised. I kind of expected this to get be a little bit choppy or something. But overall this is handling really really well for <laughs> surprisingly well. I'm actually very very impressed with the performance out of that little ARM CPU there. Now I'm going to keep that 4K video streaming for a little bit. We're going to go back and just kind of jump through here so you can see how quickly things load. So let's jump into the admin dashboard, go through playback libraries. Under dashboard we can kind of see what's going on. So you can see I'm playing trolls through Firefox. Uh, it's not thr throttling too high on everything. You can see when I scan the media library there everything did kind of jump up but it's still streaming that 4K movie. Um, and it's not completely maxed out, so it's pretty, pretty good. I'm, I'm surprised. I don't, ex I didn't expect the Minecraft server to work. So, with how this is going, um, that actually might be a thing that happens. So, speaking of, let's go ahead and let's see if this thing can run a Minecraft server. I already went and pulled most of everything that we're gonna need. I installed EA, I installed the Minecraft server, and I ran it for the first time, so it can uh, render the EULA. And we're going to go ahead and accept that real quick. So we're going to do a sudo nano elua.txt, enter, and we are going to change this to true. So control O, enter, control X. And now what we're going to do is go ahead and give it a little bit more RAM. So by default, I think it has a max of a gigabyte. And being that this uh, phone has three gigabytes of RAM, we can up that just a little bit. So to do this, I went to the conf D folder and I'm gonna do a sudo nano and then that Minecraft file that is in it. And this is what it looks like. Uh, if you're familiar with running Minecraft servers on Windows, this is basically the run bat file. So we're gonna go ahead and up this. Let's give this uh, a gigabyte to start, a gigabyte as the uh, base, and let's go with 2.5 gigabytes roughly as uh, the max. Being that we can see over here that it is idling at 100, 2.5 should be okay. Control O, enter, X this out, and now we're gonna go ahead and actually run this. All right, so let's go ahead and run Minecraft D start start up the server and then we'll go ahead and jump into the console now being this is the first time it's actually opening or running the server it's gonna have to generate the world generate the spawn and a couple other things so this is going to take a while and we can see with this initial launch it hasn't even started gener generating the uh, world yet where the cpu is riding pretty high and the uh, memory is slowly climbing as time progresses so the minecraft server is started up and it got done a little bit ago and we can see that <laughs> right once I started it crashed so I didn't even have to jump in for that to happen uh, what we're gonna do is go into the server properties file and see if I can make this a little bit better it was writing 90 to 100 percent the entire time so we're gonna go see if the, we can uh, fix this real quick and let's see what we can change here to help that out the uh, view distance let's go ahead and cut this down let's let's cut this in half to five so then it will only be rendering five blocks at a time allow nether Let's turn that to false just so it doesn't load that. Spawn NPCs, let's turn that to false. We'll keep animals and mobs because I would consider those essential to the gameplay. And if it can't render those, uh, you can't really play survival properly. Uh, so let's go ahead and stick with this. Okay, so I think it might be okay to join up because the uh, CPU is not working nearly as hard. And the service is still running. The RAM is at 2.15 gigabytes, so I do think it's still running. It got overloaded a couple times and it was just now writing up to 100%. So we're gonna go ahead and try to actually join this server. And it looks like it's gonna work. There goes the CPU usage, so I'm loading on in. And we're gonna do a couple tests here just to make sure it's playable. Which so far I'm moving around. You can see the chunks, the chunk distance of five seems to be Probably a pretty good sweet spot. So let's start off just by breaking some blocks. Oh, okay. So we got a little bit of a little bit of lag in the block break. All right. So we are encountering some sheep, and it, when I get close to the sheep, the CPU is throttling a little bit. But it, the responsiveness is there. They do kind of lag a little bit when you hit them, but the uh, initial hit is uh, registered immediately, which is good. And the blocks still have a little bit of lag to it. I've been moving quite a bit, and it's keep having to uh, generate and render new chunks. So I'm gonna go ahead and stay put for a little bit and see if that helps out the performance here. 
been about a minute since I moved and it does seem to be doing a little bit better. We have one core switching with 100% but everything else seems to be doing okay. And when I break a block you see that it's instant now. So when I do stay put um, it's not nearly as laggy. So it's much much more responsive. Um, to a point that I would consider very very playable. Um, you might be able to get another person on here. Especially if you went ahead and lowered the uh, the chunks maybe a couple more and uh, maybe disabled some mobs or something but I know with one person this is actually a very very playable experience ah! I'm still getting the uh, server overloaded message uh, one thing we're gonna do real quick is I'm gonna just load a flat world in creative and see how that looks alright so I am in the only changes I really made was I changed the world to flat changed the game mode to creative and I disabled both mob and uh, animal spawning. You can see that it is working pretty good. Even when I'm going um, completely straight, making it render out chunks pretty quick, we're not hitting 100% at all. It's probably going about to uh, probably an average of 50% CPU utilization when we're forcing it to do that. The blocks are extremely responsive, and I think you'd probably be able to have another person or two connect to this type of a creative server using the Pine phone. Granted, if you want people to connect to a survival server, you're going to have to have the settings, these uh, server properties turned down so low that it's not going to be that good of a play, a gameplay experience. But to answer the simple question in a yes or no manner, can the Pine phone run a Minecraft server? Yeah. Yeah, there's no issue here. So my general conclusion would be if you do wind up buying one of these phones if they're ever in stock uh, and you end up not liking it as a uh, actual cell phone, there are tons of uses for this. This is basically a um, uh, lower end Raspberry Pi with a built in screen. That's how I look at it, because based on what we've seen today, it can function as one. It could actually do some. Uh, uh, tasks that you may want it to do. And with that said, I will have some more videos coming up on this phone. Uh, I do want to install a actual uh, desktop, like a whole desktop environment, and see if it can run pretty good as an actual computer. And I'm going to be taking the SIM card out of my primary cell phone, the OnePlus 7T, throwing it in here and using this for at least one week as my daily driver. And then when I'm done doing that, that is how I'm going to end up wrapping up and creating my full in-depth review of this phone and using a Linux phone in general. So do make sure you are subscribed and you ring that bell down below so you do not miss that video when it comes out. Please like this video if you did like it. If you didn't, go ahead and dislike it. Uh, please leave a comment down below if you have this Pine phone and your experience with it or what else you would like to see with it. Uh, I might be doing some uh, distribution or image uh, overviews and reviews if enough people are interested at me looking at a specific one. So you can see a full detailed walkthrough of the actual environments on this thing. But other than that, I do hope you have a beautiful day and goodbye.